Shared storage is an API that allows websites to store and access data that's not isolated by the top level site. It is the underlying infrastructure used by privacy preserving output APIs, private aggregation and select URL. The private aggregation and select URL APIs are the only APIs you can use to read data out of shared storage. If you're interested in learning more, this video will go through why we need shared storage, common use cases, and how you can use the output APIs with shared storage. Before we start, my name is Tara and I'm a developer relations engineer in the Privacy Sandbox team. So why do we need the shared storage API? Well, shared storage allows sites to store and access data that is not isolated by the top level site, but what does that really mean? Web storage, for example, local storage or IndexedDB, is partitioned by top level sites. Let's say we have two sites, news.example and blog.example, and they both have an embedded iframe from a third site, shoes.example. Now this iframe from the shoes site could write to local storage when it's embedded on either the news or the blog site, but that data will not be shared. Data written to local storage from shoes.example embedded in news.example is separate from data written to local storage from the same shoes.example iframe embedded on blog.example. This is great for privacy because it means third-party sites like shoes.example are prevented from taking part in activities such as cross-site tracking. But what if you have legitimate reasons for sharing data across top-level sites that do not involve tracking individual users across the web? While working towards building a more private web, browsers still need to enable key use cases. You can use shared storage to store and access unpartitioned data. However, data can only be read in a secure environment and you can only access data stored in shared storage using specific APIs called output APIs. Output APIs provide ways to use data stored in shared storage depending on your use case. Combining output APIs with shared storage enables key use cases for the web. There are two output APIs, private aggregation and select URL. I'll describe what the APIs are for, then explain how to use them. Let's start with the select URL API. Select URL lets you choose what content to show a user based on their shared storage data without revealing the underlying data stored. You provide a list of URLs, for example, different versions of an ad or article, then you use a secure piece of code called a worklet to read the shared storage data and select the most appropriate URL from the list based on the data. The chosen URL is rendered in a secure, isolated environment called a fenced frame. Until at least 2026, the chosen URL can also be rendered in an iframe. This API is great if you want to do things like rotate creative for ads or select a creative based on how frequently it has already been seen. You can also use the API to set up A-B tests or even render different elements based on whether the user has already visited your site. Next, let's look at the private aggregation API. Private aggregation allows you to gather valuable insights about your users without compromising their privacy. It allows you to generate aggregated histograms based on noise cross-site data. You can use shared storage to store data about your users, for example, what products they've viewed or what ads they've interacted with. Then, Private aggregation allows you to combine that data in a way that makes it so you can't identify individual users. And to further protect privacy, random noise is added to the aggregated data, making it even harder to reverse engineer and identify individuals. Even with the noise, you can still extract valuable information about user behavior, such as the overall popularity of certain products or the effectiveness of different ad campaigns. This API is great if you want to do things like measure unique reach, so to understand how many people have seen your content, or measure effective frequency reach, so to build reports of unique users that have seen a piece of content at least K number of times. You can also use private aggregation to measure user demographics. There's a lot to learn about these APIs, so if you have a use case for shared storage with one of the output APIs, Take a look at goo.gle slash shared storage to get more details on how they work. 
so you know what shared storage is, why it exists and where you can use it. Now let's look at implementation. Let's start with writing data. Write data into shared storage using set or append. These methods have two string parameters, key and value. And you can optionally pass a third options object for setting additional configuration. Shared storage has a delete method to remove an individual key value pair and a clear method to clear all storage data for your site. You can do all of this with JavaScript or by using response headers. To read data from your shared storage, you need to use a worklet. Worklets provide a secure environment for processing shared storage data. They can return useful results, but can't directly share data with the associated browsing context. Worklets must be a JavaScript class in a separate file that implements an async run method. Only within this worklet can you read values directly out of shared storage using the get method with the key you want to read. Depending on the output API that you plan on using with the worklet, the arguments passed into the run method will vary. If you're using the select URL API, the run method can use URLs and data arguments, where the URLs are the list of URL options you want to select from. And data is an object for any data you want to pass into the worklet. The run method here should return the index of the URL to select. For the private aggregation API, the run method will just take data as an argument. Return values are ignored. Going back to our select URL worklet example, the final step is to register the class in the worklet using the global register function. Pass the name and the operation, meaning the class name, to the register method. To use this worklet with shared storage, you can call create worklet with the path of the worklet. At this point, you can use the select URL API to select the appropriate URL. To do this, call the select URL method on your loaded worklet. This takes three parameters. The first is the name you use to register the worklet. In this case, select content. Second is the list of URLs you want to select from. The final parameter is an optional options object where you can pass any data you want your worklet to know about alongside other configuration options. In this case, I've added the resolve to config option to ensure the result of this call will return the configuration for a fence frame where the URL to render is hidden. By default, this is false and will return you the obfuscated URL. When it's false, you can use that URL with an iframe. The response of the call to this function will be the config object to be set on your fence frame. We're continuing to develop the shared storage API. So if you'd like to contribute to the discussion, head to the link below to create a new issue and see the current proposals and conversations. For all the latest shared storage announcements, join our mailing list linked in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and be sure to check out our other Privacy Sandbox videos. Mm -hmm.